Henry born? 1912. And then, then came? And then came uh, uh, yours truly, Phil, uh, <laughs> in 1913. And then uh, Ruth was, was born in uh, 1915. You want any more dates than that? And, uh, yeah, and sure. Stanley was... Uh, uh, well, he said he he died in 33, wasn't yeah, it? And, and, and Back off the thing, yeah, I gotta figure that. 16, 6 and 30, he was 1917. 1917. Yeah, right. 1917. Yeah. And then Harold, 1922, and then I was born in 1927. So that takes care of all. I understand he had the reputation of being the only Carlson who had any athletic abilities. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, that's he, right, he, yeah. He played basketball, baseball, and. Uh, and, uh, he was captain of our church uh, baseball team. And uh, we got a picture of him here. Is that? <laughs> so uh, he had a lot of friends. He was very and, and, and my mother. But it was because Walt was an only child, and and then they sort of grew up together. Yeah, they grew up together, and Walt was always over to our house, and with uh, in fact, our house was a gathering place for everybody. Yeah. Remember that? I remember our big front porch. We always used to have kids on that big porch, yeah. front porch playing Monopoly and all these broken and all these games when I. Uh, was growing up. It was, uh, uh, in, in age, we'd be compared to Walt Erickson, and uh, Stanley was a very familiar uh, person in church, and uh, yeah, the times that in, in the delivery work that Stanley took care of, delivery of the products, and then, um, well, I, uh, I don't know how much, I, uh, I don't know how much of Stanley I can tell about, except that he was always there. Mm -hmm. He was always there. And, uh, Their home has always been like uh, a second home to me. I practically grew up with Uncle Carl and Aunt, C Aunt Edith. Uh, I spent as much time in their house as I did in ours. And Stanley and I were inseparable. We saw each other every single day. That was uh, the w most traumatic thing that ever happened to me in my whole life when Stanley was killed by the car, in the car. In fact, he was getting ready to come out. We lived on, on Trask Road on Jake Olson's old farm and we were he was getting ready to come out to visit me in the afternoon and he had two packages of meat he had to deliver and then he was going to be out and I waited for him all afternoon and late in the afternoon Uncle Stein came out and said that he'd been hit by a car, he was in the hospital, he didn't know what the situation was. Well then it wasn't only a short time later we got word that he passed away. And the very peculiar thing is at that time, I used to go down to the farm and pick up some milk down on the farm, down on the, what is now the uh, Busti uh, Sugar Grove Road. No, I mean the Busti still what? I don't mean that. Either. Well, the old town line. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was coming out of the driveway from the place with the car. We were just, Stanley and I, Stanley was 16 and I wasn't old enough to have a license yet because I'm just six weeks younger than he is. And just pulling out of the driveway and it was just like somebody hit me in the head with a sledgehammer. I saw stars and I couldn't figure out what in the world had happened. But you can say what you want, but that was the exact minute that he was struck by the car. Bob told me that ever since I've met him. Yeah, because at just, that time, you know, it wasn't It was even so real to me that I, I thought that something had happened to me, you know. But uh, that was... Just part of it. How old would Stanley have been? Oh, okay. Well, they the boys with uh, the, the country people, the boys. And, uh, that was thanks to Dr. Rosane. He wanted Stanley to bring his meat out to him. He had several packages. And instead of uh, piling the meat in from the curbside, he'd gone around put the meat in and traffic wasn't that heavy those days but a car happened to come along and he um, door handle punctured his chest oh I didn't know that 
uh, one of those here are all open and uh, swinging them around. Oh. What was the what was it the car got caught on his he opened the door? He opened the car door mm -hmm. and was putting the meat packages on the floor in the back of Dr. Rosane's car. Oh, this I car see. came along before Stan got a chance to move. Mm -hmm. And you see the streets weren't so wide those days either. Mm -hmm. And it knocked him against the car so the door handle ended his chink. Oh, so he died see. almost suddenly, I understand. Stanley, uh, like we all did, we worked in the market, you know, on Saturdays and sometimes uh, on on other days too, you know, Friday night particularly. And I, I was away to college uh, my first year, and uh, I think it was around first part of June that uh, he was, uh, um, went out of the market and, 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 and crossed the street and parked cars and, and ran across Forest Avenue, and, and a car just started up the hill and clipped him. Huh. And so he was admitted to uh, what was then at Jamestown General uh, with a fractured skull and didn't survive, so he died. Journal on June 3rd, 1933 says it all. The article stated, Stanley David Carlson, 16, became the seventh victim of a traffic accident. He died on Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m. as a result of injuries sustained when he was struck by an automobile driven by Clifford Ash. The Carlson youth was coming from the public market with a pile of bundles held in his arms. He walked between two cars and slipped as he started crossing the traffic lane. Carlson walked into the side of the Ash automobile which was proceeding at a reasonable speed. Carlson was thrown to the pavement by the force of the collision. He was taken to the Jamestown General Hospital where he died around 7.30. The Jamestown Post had a similar On June 6th, the funeral for Stanley was held at the Swedish Baptist Church. Reverend Christensen presided, assisted by Reverend Edstam, the former pastor. I went to that I ever heard a minister say, that isn't Stanley over there. That's just his body. Stanley has already gone to heaven to be with the Lord. I have never forgotten that. That was Reverend Ed's then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a, a different outlook entirely on death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An inquest was held, and as the June 10th newspaper states, the driver was freed from blame for the fatality. He had a lot of friends, he was personable, and, and, and my mother and dad never got over it. But I, I, uh, I'm sure this happens in all families. Mm -hmm. We're his love and uh, so forth. Talk about Stanley's death? Yeah. What did she say? Did she talk at all about her emotions? Or how? Yeah. It was, it was hard. But it was really, really dear to her. Mm -hmm. Stanley was, it was the boy that really she, she felt a lot for. Oh, because he died. Yeah. He died and then, it was a heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Did she talk about Grandpa Carlson, how he, he felt after all of this? We're led to believe that it really he never was the same after that. Did she ever talk about that? I can't imagine he blamed himself. Yeah. He had uh, told him 
he had told him to do something he, he didn't used to do. And Stanley was kind of excited about that. And, and it happens. Yeah. Well, he had he was working for Daddy at the time, yeah. and, he, and he got killed. And yeah. I think that made Daddy feel no, very I bad. Think so. Yeah. Like it was sort of his fault. So. Mm -hmm.